To begin with, I already have a clip imported onto my timeline, but here is the challenge. I wanted to start with a wide shot instead of close up. Piece of cake, simply with clip selected, press Ctrl or Command R and check the reverse option. Now let's import our second clip. In between these two clips, insert an eye blinking clip on video track 2. Let's find a frame where the eye is fully open and then trim it. Adjust timeline position of this clip so that second clip starts at an opening shot. We will then cut the clip here. Now bring your playhead to the frame where the eye starts blinking. With the eye clip selected, go to Effect Controls panel and in the Opacity section, create an ellipse mask. Make sure to check the inverted option. Then resize the mask so it fits the eyeball perfectly. Next click the stopwatch icon next to mask path in order to set a keyframe. From here, use the right arrow key to move one frame forward at a time, adjusting the size of the mask as you go. To refine the mask, you can add additional points. We'll speed up the video here, but keep adjusting the mask until the blink is fully tracked. Once the mask is in place, let's adjust the mask feather to 120 and set the mask expansion to minus 100. These values will vary based on your clip, but they'll help give your mask a nice, smooth edge. Now for our second cut frame. Find the frame where the eye opens. Create another ellipse mask, but this time, I'll set keyframe on mask path and move one frame backward at a time by hitting the left arrow key. Follow the same steps as before to adjust the mask and create a smooth animation. Now let's animate the scale of the eye clip. Move 25 frames forward and set a keyframe on the scale property. Go back to the first frame, increase the scale value to fill the entire screen, and ease out the first keyframe. Then drag the second keyframe handle left for smoother animation. Next let's adjust the astronaut clip. Go to the end keyframes and, for the astronaut, set keyframes on both position and scale. Take these keyframes a few frames backward and decrease the scale value. Adjust the position to fit. Again, ease the keyframes for smooth animation. For the second clip, we'll create a zoom out effect. Just a few frames after our masking keyframes, set a keyframe for scale. Move 25 frames forward and increase the scale. Set the final keyframe to ease in and drag the first keyframe handle to the right for a smoother transition. We don't need those extra frames in the eye clip, so let's trim the clip after the animation ends. Now to give the animation more depth, from the project panel, create a new adjustment layer and set its time duration to 25 frames. Drag and drop it above the eye clip. Next head over to the effects panel, search for directional blur and double click to apply it. Also add the VR chromatic aberrations effect and set the blend mode to screen. Now create keyframes for the blur length of the directional blur. Move 12 frames forward and set the keyframe then take it to the first and last frame. Create another keyframe, setting the value to 75. For the opacity, at the mid keyframe set it to 100%. And at the start and end keyframes, set it to 0%. Go to the VR Chromatic Aberrations effect, uncheck Auto VR Properties and set the VR layout to Stereoscopic Over Under. Change the falloff distance value to 100, adjust the red, green, and blue values to your preference, and ease the keyframes for smooth animations. Once that's done, hold the Alt or Option key to duplicate the adjustment layer for the second animation. Let's check out where we are so far. I've changed my mind. Let's add some color correction to the eye clip using the Lumetri color effect. From basic correction section, decrease the temperature and exposure, then increase the contrast, highlights, and slightly lower the shadows. In the creative section, 
bump up the vibrance and apply a vignette at the bottom for extra depth. Once you're happy with the settings, copy the Lumedri color effect, head over and paste it on the second eye clip. Now let's take it up a notch, use the type tool to add text. Immediately move these layers on video track 5 and take this text just above first clip. Extend its duration to match the start of the animation. From the effect controls panel, you can adjust the font and size. Make sure to change the text alignment to center. Next duplicate the astronaut clip on video track 3 and we'll create a more complex mask. Click on pen icon and create a bezier mask around the helmet. Set keyframes on the mask path and adjust the points frame by frame. This will take some time, but it's worth it. If you prefer After Effects, it's a bit easier, or simply you can use any AI tools out there on market. Now let's animate the text. Apply an ellipse mask and adjust its size so that it cover whole text. Change its feather value to 100, next set keyframe for the mask path, and take it few frames forward shrinking the mask on the first frame. Then use the VR glow effect to add a soft glow. Set the luma threshold to 0, use a tint color I'm going with white, and set the glow radius to 15. Duplicate the text over the masked astronaut clip, and instead of fill set it to a stroke. Then just be for the transition, add another text by duplicating the same text, and change the text. Set keyframes for position and take it few frames forward. And adjust white position value to animate the text sliding down. Now again, let's duplicate text just below that eye blinking clip. But make sure to place it at end of text animation. And also instead of that stroke, we'll set fill. To get rid of that text animation, you can remove position's keyframes. For our topmost text, you can simply press Ctrl or Command D to add cross dissolve transition. Let's delete that starting fade in transition. Next, find the eye closing frame and trim your text. For the next scene, text will be duplicated and animated to slide up. This is pretty much the same as before, but in the opposite direction. Let's duplicate same text just below eye blinking clip. Then trim it and take it to video track 5. Instead of whole text, I want our text to animate one word at a time. For that again, I want to set this text stroke. Again, I'm duplicating that bottom text. Take it just few frames forward and delete that first word. Make sure your playhead is at last keyframe. And now adjust exposition value of your text so that it matches with the final text. Again, we'll repeat same steps for our first text as well. For extra effect, a text flicker can be added. The text can be cut into sections of two frames each. Every other frame can then be deleted. Repeat this step with the other text layers. You can also use Gaussian Blur instead of Directional Blur for different effects. That completely depends on what works best for your clip. And finally, you can add these sound effects at each transitions. And this is what you'll end up with.